Hey everybody, so uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to make your own uh, temp page or modifier key. Uh, basically a key that will take you to another page while held and return you to your original page while, uh, when released, uh, whatever that page happened to be. Uh, we're going to be doing this with DMX remotes and an executor. Uh, if you want to skip the manual setup or you want more of these, uh, more than one of these installed on the same show file, this can get this will get screwy if you try to do more than one. Um, or you need a version that responds super fast if you're going to have quick pan motions with it. Um, I have a plugin on my website in the link below that'll install it all for you. Uh, click a button, type the number, whole thing's done for you. Um, but even if you decide to go that route, uh, these concepts can be used for other things, so I don't think it's a total waste of time to learn, but I'm also kind of a fucking nerd, so, you know, my opinion's a little skewed. So anyways, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start out uh, in our setup. Like I said, we're going to do this with DMX remotes. So let's head on over there. Uh, and we're going to create two remotes, one for our on trigger and one for our off trigger. For right now, we are going to unpatch them. And uh, so the type is going to be a command. Now, you can type it directly into this field. I'm going to do it with macros just so we can see each line separately. So I'm just going to use macro one here and macro 2 for our off uh, command, and that's it. So uh, two remotes, uh, we're going to worry about patching them later. They're a command type, and our commands are macros right now. So let's head on over to those macros. So macro 1 was our on page, so temp on. Uh, and we need to go, I'm going to use page 87. There's no reason uh, you should feel the need to use that page. That's just kind of a number that stuck with me. Um, so macro takes us to that page, but before it does that, we need to know what page we're on. So we're going to add a couple of lines above that. So we're going to use uh, user vars for this. And the reason I use user vars instead of just normal uh, global system variables, uh, just in case you're on a multi-user session, um, keeps things clean, keeps your things out of other people's hair, especially if you both happen to be using this or something like that. Um, and they're accessed more quickly by the console, not that that really matters in this. Um, but anyways, so we're going to set uh, this, we're going to say page source, uh, I'm going to say fader. If, if you have your pages linked, you don't have to separate fader and uh, button. Uh, and we're going to make it equal to our fader page variable. Now for those who don't know what that is, if I type list fair over here, we can see a variable that comes up called fader page. If I change my page and type this again, oops, we can see that it changes with our page. Now, when I say that this variable equals this one, it doesn't mean that it stores a reference here, which means it, it's going to store the value, which means if this changes, this does not. So if this equals 2 when we set this variable, and then this becomes 87 in a moment, this still remains 2, so we have a way to reference back to where we started. So uh, we're going to do the same thing with our button pages. Set user var. Page source button equals, oops, button page. Uh, if you look up higher here, you will see there is another variable called button page. Uh, and that's it. So we store our current pages, and then we go to the page we want, and that's it. Now let's create our off uh, command, so temp off. So first thing, we're going to return to the pages we had, so fader page page source fader and button page page source button and that'll take us uh, back to where we started from I'll create a space there just for visibility uh, and just a little bit of cleanup uh, helps keep your show file not cluttered if you have to go look for a certain variable um, so we set user var uh, page source fader uh, equal and then we don't put anything after it and that clears the variable from memory. Uh, same thing with the other one page source button equals and this also ensures that you can't accidentally trigger it and be taken back to whatever the last value of this was stored um, so it just kind of helps prevent other errors. So that's it. Uh, we return to our original pages and then we cleared out the variables and we're done and we can test it right here so we're using page 87 you can see we're on page 2 it takes us to 87 takes us back we're all good 
I turn on this, we go to page one, it takes us to page 87 and back. So we know that's working. Uh, now, next thing, we need something to trigger that uh, game extra mode. So let's head on over, what the hell did I press, uh, to our patch. And we're going to create a new fixture type for this. So basically, we want something with two channels, one to trigger it on, one to trigger it off. Uh, we're going to create one. So let's say dummy switch pair. We're going to edit it. We're going to add two parameters to it. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we actually patch them to something. Uh, and now the attributes, I like to use dimmer attributes, and I will uh, explain that in a little bit or as we go. Um, for our values, uh, I want you're going to want the one that's going to trigger it on to default at zero, and its on value to be 100, and reverse for the other one. So we want it to be at 100 normally. We'll have a queue that puts it at zero, and then when it's released, it goes back to 100 on its own. The reason I'm doing this in our highlight values is because if you tap full twice on any fixture that has a dimmer attribute, which is why I'm using this, um, it will take you to its highlight value. So that way we can just double tap full, we're at the value, we store it, we're done. Uh, I'm also going to enable snap, uh, just in case there's a fade time for whatever reason. Uh, it will make sure that these both trigger at the same time, uh, no matter what the fade time or what the fade percentage is, or the snap percentage. Um, just to avoid any clutter of one remote going off when it's not supposed to in relation to the other one. Uh, and that is it. That is all we need for this. So we're going to close out of that and we're going to patch it in. So let's create a dummy layer. Excuse you. Dummy. I can spell it like a dummy. Uh, we're going to select our switch. We'll give it some useless fixture number. And we're going to use universe 200 for this. It doesn't have to be anything you're actually giving physical output to. You can disable the universe in your patch even. Um, but once you've triggered something that's supposed to have that patch, uh, it will be triggered in DMX remotes, uh, even on, on PC where there's no parameter output. So we're going to save that. Uh, we're patched to 200.1. We're fixture type right. Now we're going to disable React to Master. And a couple of reasons for that. Uh, most obvious, if your Grandmaster's down, you're in blackout, you need to use this key. Uh, it's not going to work if the Grandmaster's telling it uh, don't work. Uh, second thing is that uh, if you ever use the store look feature, um, so there's a, a selection option when you store queue that is called look. And when you use that, it grabs every fixture in, right, in your rig that has React to Master enabled. Uh, what it does is it grabs Anything that's above zero, it grabs everything about that fixture. Uh, anything at zero, it just grabs the dimmer information, so it keeps it at zero when you fade into that look. Um, like I said, except React to Master. So if you ever use that, this will not be affected by it. Uh, so that can't screw up anything else. Uh, so that's it for our patch. We disabled this. We patched everything we needed, and we're done. We're going to save. And now... Uh, we're going to actually create our trigger. So let's check it out on our DMX page. So we can see our fixture here um, on DMX sheet starting universe 200. Um, so we're going to grab fixture 50,001. And when I put it to full once, you'll see the dimmer value went up. Put it full again. It's now in its highlight value, so these two have switched. We're going to store that to this executor. Let's clear out. Uh, let's go ahead and label it. Page 87 in this case assign some parameters to it. So first thing, let's make it a flash button. Uh, make sure that even if there is a fade time on it, uh, it ignores it. Uh, it's automatically at its full value immediately. Uh, also, we want to turn off, or sorry, uh, protect it from swap and kill. Uh, ignore executor time and turn off off on overwritten, although nothing else should be using this. Uh, and I also like to turn on auto fix, um, which fixes it as soon as it's turned on. Just in case you forget to fix it, you can't end up on the other page uh, with no way to turn it back off. So that should be it for all this. I also like to lock the sequence. And the reason I do the sequence is because if you end up wanting to move this, you'll have to unlock it if you locked the executor. Um, then you might forget to relock it. So that protects us from accidentally storing other information to it so you know that when you toggle this button you're not going to flash your moles or something. Um, so let's go ahead and fix it like I mentioned. And now when we press it we can see up here that it is acting as a switch. One turns on, the other one turns off. So all we have left to do 
is go to our remote inputs and assign it the patch values. So we did universe 200, channel 1, and uh, also make sure that you are enabled, for fuck's sake, uh, down here. And that's it. So now when we press this, it'll take us to our page, we release it, it returns us. Uh, one issue you might run into, let's use a different page number. So I've only got to page 500 stored in here. So let's do page 800. Now when I go to trigger that, we will see that nothing happens. And we look at our command line, we see an error that says number too big, because I've only got to page 500 stored, 501's the biggest it lets me go to. Super easy fix, uh, store, page, whatever page you're trying to go to, 800. All it did was tell the console that page exists now. And if we press this button now, we see that it's working. So that's it for that. Uh, you might notice, uh, I can't, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the video, um, but there is a slight lag between pressing the button and it actually triggering. You can see here maybe uh, there's a delay between actually seeing the flash on, flash off, and the trigger of the DMX remote. Um, that's just kind of the way DMX remotes work. It's the same on a physical console, although I think it's a little bit faster. Um, the way around this is putting it into the command field of the queue itself. However, I would suggest against that uh, in this instance because if you trigger it on, off, and on again too fast, it'll store the page you go to as the source page because it won't have turned off again because your off is still on DMX remote. Um, and then you'll just get stuck on that page. Uh, so like I said, the, I mentioned the plugin earlier that installs it for you. Uh, it gets around all that, so it's basically instantaneous um, with a whole bunch of plugin voodoo magic bullshit in the background to do that. Um, that's it. So uh, you have created your own modifier key, temp page key, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, and that's it. So like I said, uh, you can find this pl the plugin to automate this and other tasks at my website, geofodesigns.com, as, as well as other tutorial videos in the future. Uh, sign up for the newsletter and subscribe on here for updates and new releases of plugins. And uh, thanks for watching, and I hope it helps you out.